Welcome back, it is Friday, that means FNA Friday, and today it's gonna to be part two of the most common animation mistakes. And today we're gonna to talk about ease in and ease out. Now, if you pick up the illusion of life, you have on page 47, the principles of animation. And then on page 62, it talks about slow in and slow out. So some people call it slow in and slow out, ease in and ease out, easing in, easing out. There are different examples, there are different terms. Then you can also look at this book, the Animator Survival Kit. And on page 50, it starts to talk about slow in, ease in and slowing out and easing out. So lots of literature by the masters. So you might be used to specific terms and definitions and kind of how you want to apply those terms and everything. And just so I don't confuse people, the way I use it is I ease into a stop, I ease into a pose or I ease out of a pose. So as I'm going to keep on talking, that's kind of how I use it. Now, generally you can ease out by just flatten your tangents. If you're in Maya, you have your character or your object ball or an arm, whatever it is, you can move that, you can flatten the tangents and you can have a very quick ease in or you can have a very long drawn out ease in by adding more keys or having weighted tangents and manipulating the tangents like that. Now, but I'm not here to talk about the general definition of easing in and out. What are the most common animation mistakes? Well, the very specific thing about easing in and out is that students start and stop an object or a character or a limb or something without really adding the proper for ease ins and outs. Now, why is that a problem? The problem is that the sense of weight will be gone. Now, of course, this all depends on the object, the limb, the weight, and the style. There are many, many factors where you can kind of change the way things ease in and out by even one frame, that's totally fine. But the problem is that if you have a character that just stands and then suddenly the arm just moves or the head just turns or a foot just gets up, because things just suddenly start and stop, there is no emotion behind it, there's no character behind it, there's no weight behind it. And that a lot of times comes from doing either step mode or linear type of blocking and then just either not splining it or not really thinking about, well, how is this going to actually move and how is that movement going to affect the audience in terms of are we perceiving a specific weight or specific emotion? If my head turn is slow, if my head turn is fast, is the character alert or not? Now, again, depending on the style and the object, you can have something where like my fingers, they can wiggle, they can start and stop pretty fast because it is small. It's a muscles in here and tens and everything. I can move this really quickly. Now, there's a difference between this versus this versus that, like how fast I can move my body left and right, me going to the left and then going to the right. There's a certain amount of momentum where I have to ease in and it takes a while for that momentum to stop and then the inertia and the weight and the muscles to bring you back over there. And the way I explain it to my students and hopefully this is an example that will make sense to you is that imagine you have a car and you push that car from A to B. And as you start pushing, it's a heavy car. So you're gonna push this, you're gonna take a long time, and it starts going and then you wanna change direction, you're gonna run to the other side of the car. And as the car goes this way, you're gonna stop it and push the other way to change direction and go the other way. Now, if this car is a real car, it's gonna take a long time to push and then to stop and change direction. If this is a tiny little Lego car, then you can just take a finger, push it so it starts going. You can push it to have it go the other direction. So you really have to think about the object, the size, the weight, the intent, the style, but you can't just have everything start and stop on one frame. You can take this example if I have a basketball. I can just push this with my finger because it's pretty light. Now I have another ball that's kind of a weight ball, a couple pounds. I push this with my finger and nothing happens. I can try with two fingers and it's harder. I have to push really hard to get this going. And you can try this at home with all kinds of examples of a foam, rolling type of tube, a roll of tape, everything that's kind of light, you can see that you can just push and stop and change the direction and manipulate the whole thing without any problems. But when it comes down to animation, you have to really think about each part of the body. Again, fingers, totally different than the root. And going back to the topic, the most common problem to me are actually two things about ease ins and outs is that you have Sudden starts, so an arm suddenly starts, or head suddenly turns, or just body parts that just go from one frame to the next. There is no ease out of that. There's no sense of weight. So that's one of the first problems that if something just starts or just suddenly stops, the sense of weight is gone. Now, the exception, of course, is that if you have something going and there's a wall and suddenly stops, that's an outside object, could be an outside force. If you do something and someone pushes you, then you're gonna have a sudden move that doesn't ease out. It's gonna be driven by that outside force. There are always, of course, exceptions to that 
ease in and out. So with those common mistakes, again, within that two things, so you have the sudden start and stop. And the second one where I see this a lot is having no ease in and out with the root. That's a super, super common thing. So if you have a character where it's either one step or a side step or a couple steps and comes to a stop, that stop has to ease in. But it's even worse when the character suddenly stops and then goes the other way. So that change of direction without the proper ease in and out kills the sense of weight. So if your character sits down or gets up, whatever motion you have with your root, you have to think about the inertia, the movement, the momentum, the weight, how long is it gonna take for the route to come to a stop, change direction. And of course, all of that's gonna be influenced by the actual character, the emotion, the acting choices. But just from a technical point of view, watch out for your spacing to really properly convey the weight through ease ins and ease outs. So make sure that you act things out or shoot reference and study that material. But if you just act it out on your own, you can tell that when you move how things work and how quickly you can change your body, change direction again, totally different if you have the root or fingers or head or even the jaw, all of that, there's weight to it. So pay attention to sudden starts and stops. It will kill your animation. Boom, that's it, ease ins and outs. I hope that was helpful. If you have questions about this, comments are open. Let me know if you have examples where you've seen this somewhere else or you want me to take a look at something, let me know in the comments as well. Speaking of taking a look, I do have workshops. So if this was helpful and you want me to incorporate this into your shots, you can sign up. Of course, my workshops are always open. Link in the description with all the information. And as always, if you watch this whole thing till the very end, I do appreciate it. And if you wanna get notified about all the things that I'm doing, subscribe and hit that bell button so you get the notification of all of my uploads. They're almost every day except weekends, but that is it. I'm gonna stop now and I will see you next week.